Let the voice of America return to one voice, one sound of the will of God. Let the people of America come together in the reality of cosmic history and not a history revised. Oh, let the people return to the liberty flame, to the hour of their nation's birth, to the moment when all stood as one, stood tall before the world and said, we are a united people. We are 13 colonies, no longer separate, but one. And out of the one that we are shall come the many manifestations of our God, e pluribus unum. So the all-seeing eye of God is upon you. O oh, America, follow its rays back to that eye. Follow the rays to your oneness. Remove all that divides you and return to the hope, to the glory of God, to love, to union, to noble purpose, and a certain simplicity of life that restores the highest virtue in each breast. I am come this first day of the year 1993. I come to salute the chilas of the will of God, and those who would be, and those who might be. I salute the founder of the nation, and therefore you have seen a slice of the life of the one who carried in his heart truly the mission from the God star, and that of the four and twenty elders, and yet, all was not known to his outer mind. The early ambition may be seen as self-seeking. We see it as self-finding, finding oneself, positioning oneself, that one might be of use to one's peers. Thus, beloved, be seated then, be seated at Mount Vernon this day and look out upon the Potomac, the cold waters and the wind, and know of winter in the east, and know that it is the fire of winter that inspires self-conquest. It is the fire of winter that compels sacrifice, whereby the old man is set aside the new man is born, and that new man is one who is ready to give his all for the victory of a cause or to accept ultimate defeat. Think how much one must love to place oneself, one's men, on the line. 
for the crossing of the Delaware and the defeat of the drunken Hessians. Yes, beloved ones, truly this is the making of the man and of the woman and of the soul and of the child. Those were the days when there did surely hang in the balance the entire blueprint for America. And that blueprint is yet there, overlaid upon the 50 states and more, overlaid upon the I am race. Much has come between the blueprint and that which is in the earth much to be righted, yet it can be righted, for Saint Germain has released the dispensation of the golden age of Aquarius, and our Mother Liberty stands tall in this hour, stands tall, beloved, to enfire every heart with its own mission. That sense of mission must be all-consuming and propelling, Take heed then that it is not the product of the surface mind, but of that which is deep within the psyche, which has been there for tens of thousands of years, waiting its season of germination. Yes, beloved, each one of you stands as an individual this day as you walk the grounds of Mount Vernon and consider the vista that Washington saw. Consider his hopes, his dreams. Consider how events themselves compelled him and how in those compelling events he seeking to lead did find himself at the right place at the right time. Think of the tremendous unfoldment of the mind of Christ, no longer identifying with a separate state or plantation, but identifying with the whole, the whole eye vision and the entire cosmic conception. To say, I will not defend my home or my home state, for I have embraced the larger cause of the future of humanity. To say this, beloved, does make you worthy to be a chila of the will of God. It is to have the vision now enhanced by the presence everywhere of the all-seeing eye, the vision of a larger purpose, and to have the sense of self-worth to see yourself as a part of the plan, to have the sense of self-worth that knows that whether your role seems insignificant, no one's role ever is, for all count as a part of that one body, having one and several talents, each to bring to another, that there might be love's interchange and the rejoicing and the praising God in your midst and in your members, the praising God that all the pieces of the mighty mandala of light may assemble to achieve the day of the cosmic morn. The cosmic morn is when the spiritual sun does rise. It rises in you, it rises in a world. We are not separatists regarding America. We say that this is the place of the experiment of the Great White Brotherhood and of the endowment of Saint Germain. We say that if the experiment will fail here, it will not succeed anywhere else. For the peculiar people of ancient Atlantis and even Lemuria, have reincarnated here to take up where they left off and to finish the work begun. Thus, America is more than a nation. 
It is a symbol yet to all people of the possibilities still for the realization of individual and world freedom. It therefore rests upon the shoulders of those who have known freedom in the past, those who have known it, embraced it, and realized the expansion of the flame of liberty in the heart. O oh, that mighty flame! Do you realize, beloved, that there are those today in the world who have tasted of freedom, who cry out to return to their totalitarian regimes, to communism and other forms of socialism? Why is it so, beloved? It is because these souls have been denied the opportunity of unfoldment of the principles of freedom not only in this century, but in many past centuries. They have not been a part of ancient golden ages. Therefore, the momentum of a unique and individual Christhood is not their personal inheritance. Not all people upon earth then, in this hour, find themselves suited to a way of life of such total independence. And even some on these shores lack the wherewithal to make right choices and to teach their children how to choose between real individual Christ freedom and a certain license and wantonness that causes the desecration of the tree of life in every temple. I am Moria, chief of the Darjeeling Council of the Great White Brotherhood, founder of the Summit Lighthouse, teacher of the messengers, and your own beloved Bapu. I stand then with you as though at the pinnacle of life and of the world in this property of Mount Vernon. As we survey then the capital city of the nation, we contemplate whether those who now take the reins of government shall indeed take an upward sweep into new dimensions of greatness, into the acquisition of qualities of the character of the living Christ. This we hope for, this we pray for, this we know must come to pass if America shall enter an age of self-transcendence and new birth. But we are also realists, and we see how the life force has been spent and how many who rise to positions of leadership. Though they have the training, though they have the intellect, do not have the balance of heart or even of some semblance of an inner and deep spiritual path and tie to octaves of light. What shall we do then as we survey and the all-seeing eye of God does pinpoint the many life streams who shall take up their service, full of hope, full of determination, yet not always wise and not able to predict the future. For they may be politicians and even some statesmen in their midst, but they are not prophets and they do not calculate into all that they plan the cycles of descending karma. At no time in your personal history, O Chilas of the will of God, has it been so important for you to understand the meaning of karma. And this is because so much karma of the ages falls due in this decade, following the long cycle of that karma being born by the Lord and Savior. Karma, then, can tip the scales suddenly. On one day, you have all that it takes to accomplish the feat at hand. On the next, 
Karma descends, the stock market falls, and you realize that the optimum moment has somehow slipped through your fingers and that which you have proposed is no longer a solution. The days will be quixotic, yes, beloved, as quicksilver, note how events appear and suddenly disappear, and you wonder where all of the planning has gone. Thus, it is good to concentrate. It is good to establish goals and meet them quickly and bring your efforts into physical manifestation that you have something in hand to show besides many files in your filing cabinets many deliberations, many meetings, and yet somehow the physical precipitation has escaped you. This is the kind of year you can look forward to. If you want to get something done, do it quickly, beloved, before the time is past. Beware of delays, and beware of delays on the path of your own individual life. Delays cannot be tolerated when the timetable is short. Even if you should live to be 144 and you are now a babe in arms, I tell you, you have not a moment to lose to make the difference on planet Earth. You might smile at this comment, beloved ones, for you are not so used to so thinking. But I must bring you into consonance with Lord Gautama and the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. What do we do then when we see that those who appear to be strong and youthful and who have all that it takes to run a government are in fact at inner levels, handicapped spiritually? Well, beloved ones, if we are to be our brother's keeper and our sister's keeper, then we must make up the difference we must invoke the light. We must call to the cosmic Christs to descend into those temples of those individuals who have long ago lost their potential for Christhood. There is no other way when we consider that we are one body. If we are one body and we believe that where there is life, there is hope, then we must invoke a mighty intercession for the descent of cosmic Christs to enter the arena and to overshadow those who simply are not equal to their times. George Washington was a man who was equal to his times, but as you have understood, he has grown into his boots. He has grown into his uniform. He has put on the Christ when he did not know that the term was Christ or Christhood. He put on the higher identity and moved forward, even though he moved forward with common faults that all have. Thoughts of pride or ambition, desires to do this and that. Yes, beloved, he moved on, impelled by a higher guidance and the right hand of God. This is the understanding I would give to you. You cannot sit on the sidelines and wait and be a spectator. You know that you have a mission. You must be up and doing. You must be up and doing, beloved. You must realize that in the very process of doing what is the immediate greatest necessity, you are engaging with the forces of your time, with the energies of the planetary systems and the light of the sun itself. Yes, beloved, each moment in cosmic history, each hour and day and year contains that energy necessary that all life waves of a matter cosmos might respond and bring to that conglomerate of the mystical body of God worlds without end, their portion their essence, that which they have brought to a quintessence. As you might say, the very heart of their character and life stream. Note well then, 
that many of the world's greatest leaders who have had the ultimate victory did not have it by superior intellect, but more by staying power, by trial and error, and by providence interceding. Sometimes, beloved ones, without being superstitious, you could consider that there is a certain destiny for every individual, and when that set destiny does come, according to the geometry of creation, then forces work together to bring that individual to his supreme moment, his finest hour. One never knows what is one's finest hour, except in retrospect. How does one know which of the million acts one takes towards the goal is actually the one that was the turning point that guaranteed the victory against which no outer force could stand? One does not need to know if one believes in God, if one lives under the shadow of the Almighty, the mighty I Am Presence, and trusts the inner voice, and cultivates the inner voice and the listening ear that is keen to know that inner voice. One simply knows, knows apart from all physical or mental faculties, that inner knowing and divine knowing is the overshadowing and the descending of the totality of a man or woman or child that bonds with the soul that comes together and becomes a profile of heroism. This is something you can achieve and reach for. This is an hour and a day that your own godhood must shine, lest there be no candles left in the earth that can maintain their flames against the gusts of winds that come from the fallen angels as they pass through in the point of self-disintegration. Yes, answer the question, will you see this as an hour of self-integration in God, or will you see it as an hour of self-disintegration, disassociation from the great central sun and that point in the sun where the matter cosmos meets the spirit cosmos and you yourself pass through that nexus and obtain permanent reality in the Godhead. It will take many steps and heartbeats, many movements of the limbs, many thoughts inclined to God to find your way back over the many paths that you must retrace and the footprints you must find again, lost in the sands of the Sahara, yet uncovered suddenly and then you know the way to go, and the door is opened, and another, and another. Well, beloved, I speak to you of the cause that is America, but it is the cause of the heart and the heartbeat of America. It is the small nucleus who make up the capstone of the pyramid of the civilization. It is those who are going through the process of etherealization, spiritualization, and self-transcendence, and can hold the fire of the heart, who come together in our cause, and who recognize this wilderness land as the place where individuality stands out against the sky and against the mountains and against the barrenness of winter. Through the valley, the individual is supreme. The individual stands out and yet is measured in the Taoist concept against the backdrop of a nature that is far more vast. So the vastness of the great backdrop that God has created for you to be and to be that great Tao, this is the heart of the mystery of life. Our cause then, beloved, must be espoused as never before. As you wed your soul to that cause and see 
that it was not millions who won for America in the beginning, and it may not be millions who win in the end. What counts is that it is spirits of liberty and of a fire that will not be quenched. What matters is that the pilgrims of the ages who come marching down the centuries converge in this place and take a stand against planetary evil and darkness, a stand for youth and old age and all people, a stand for God as he has a right to live in a creation that is habitable for the Lord. Thus I call you to a higher calling and a noble purpose. I call you to an ancient memory. I call you to recognize your supreme worth to my cause. I speak to you, beloved, and I do not desire to weary you in the principle, but it must be said for unseen dark ones continue to whisper in the ear and project in the mind that you are not needed, that the cause is somehow lost, that there are better fields and better valleys and even other mountains to climb. This is a holy purpose and this community does shine with those who stand and are willing to challenge forces that you cannot even calculate, whose numbers are unknown, whose energy coefficient is far beyond your awareness. You have placed your ultimate trust in God. Do not withdraw it, but continue this labor to the finish that we might be done with a major challenge to our church. Let us look to the future. Perhaps your imagination needs quickening in an age when all things are painted before you and your imagination is not challenged. Think then of what you might have thought of the future of America over the next 200 years had you been there in 1775. Yes, beloved, you may or may not have even dreamt of the glories of technology and of the millions who would come and how that fire of freedom would be preserved in their hearts and how all that you stood for would have traveled around the world many times so that little children in every nation know the name George Washington and the figure of the Statue of Liberty and the Declaration of Independence. How has a freedom so intensified and increased as the hope of the world, even unto this hour, even in an hour of the decline, you might say, of the civilization America? Think then, upon this place 200 years from now, what you would see here and upon this continent, and what people would remember as the fruits of your service. It is either a zero or it is victory. This is what you learn in the way of a cause. A cause either has total victory on behalf of all people because the components of that cause were able to see a greater life beyond that human form and that human beating heart, a life on which millions unborn would depend. I appeal to your vision and your sense of honor unto the centuries that are before you to see to it that there is established in the earth the clear and definite path of world religious freedom of freedom to know God and freedom to walk as an individual without being dictated to by church or state or those of the Nephilim societies. Blessed ones, you may not now know, but I will tell you 
that this community is considered by the hierarchy of light to be the seed of the great golden age. And what you do and the decisions you make and what you are able to publish and bring to the nations, that will determine whether a golden age will be a few square miles in Montana or cover the planet Earth and the solar system and the galaxies beyond. Such is the equation of the hour. Let none remain who do not belong in their own minds, but let all who are tempted away from the goal that is theirs to achieve right here consider to stand and still stand and to return to God and all life waves whom you have ever contacted that great glory and opportunity that is given unto you. This is my appeal to you, beloved. This is my cause. I will continue and the ascended hosts will continue. But what we do, beloved, will not count for this octave. It is what you do here today and in your lifetime that will count. It will count for everything, beloved. Therefore, I place my message to you this day upon the altar of the heart of the Lord of the world, Gautama Buddha. And I speak then of the tenor of his address and the fierceness of the Buddha that you have seen in him. Thus I can do naught else but also stand in his mighty aura and also speak to you out of his heart and his all great seriousness in this hour. I say to you, beloved, the messenger is a messenger. And if you desire to receive that acceleration on the path, even as Gautama Buddha gave it to you last evening, you must but so signify. I recommend that you find a little sticker or a little button or pin you can wear that tells the messenger, I want to be pummeled. I want to hear the truth. I want to accelerate. You may speak to me at any time for instruction, for loving, for chastening, for correction. I am open, so receive me. In this way, our messenger shall not burden any who do not desire to hear what is the word of God in the hour for that one. As we have said before, let the messenger be a messenger, and so she shall, but only by your leave, for no guru has any power except the power given by those who would be disciples. Was it not so with Ernan? Rejected by his people, he did withdraw. Thus it is the law, beloved, that the people themselves must ask for and receive even the abilities of the guru to assist them. I assure you that I am always your humble servant and that all of the ascended hosts stand before the great hall at the Grand Teton retreat and they, beloved, pledge anew their lives and all of their causal bodies to the success of the light bearers of the earth we believe, fervently beloved, that with all light bearers combining forces with heavenly hosts, this earth can be turned around and swiftly so in the physical octave. We urge you, therefore, not to underestimate your role in this process and not to think that if you vacate your mantle or your position, another will come to fill it. We cannot make the proverbial gingerbread men and set them up and place them in your vacancy. No, beloved, you must understand 
that where each of one of you is born, a star is born that is unique. There is no one in cosmos that can accomplish your assignment. Only you can do it. Others may come who are second best or third or one hundredth, but the uniqueness of your calling is yours. Perhaps reminding you of this fact will bring to you then some sense of a greater self-worth, for by the very uniqueness of your calling, you shall place the unique jewel in the mandala of the Chilas of El Moria and of the Great White Brotherhood. Now, beloved, I trust you shall plan your year and order your days and bring forth victories precipitated in form that I might show these to the lords of karma. For whatever else you may do, beloved, it is the physical accomplishment that counts. For those in physical embodiment, beloved, can only see physical things. It is as simple as that. My beloved ones, I have addressed you recently, and I desire that those of you who have not heard my dictation shall hear it, for it is also important as you go forward in the new year that you assimilate the bread of life that I did break on that occasion. I come then this day with all good wishes of the Darjeeling Council. I come also with mentors who are ascended masters and some almost descended from our retreat. They have come, therefore, to enter the departments of the church and the branches of the church throughout the world on a fact-finding mission and also to assist and advise you. I recommend, then, that you use my decrees recorded for you and that you make a special effort while the days of Capricorn are here and until their passing to make that attunement with the Darjeeling Council to seek definition and the divine will for your life stream, to seek direction, to act upon it in a most practical and thrifty manner and to bring to pass that which shall be a thing of joy and of beauty forever. I ask that you address letters to me in Darjeeling concerning your thoughts of what ought to be accomplished and how. Whatever may be your business or endeavor or your involvement in this community, I ask you to also give calls to me in 33-day cycles for action upon the contents of your letters. For as you know, St. Germain is also a part of the Darjeeling Council, and he is not the only one who has a grant beloved. But I shall not tell you who other among us of the Ascended Masters have received grants. But you shall know this in the quietness of your own heart, as you being closer to God and your presence and more in sync with that presence will come upon the awareness that you have received blessing and grace and more wind in your sails to achieve this year what you have not been able to achieve in past years. I ask you to take up now and recite with me the covenant of the Magi. In the pink section of your decrees, 
zero eight together. Father, into thy hands I commend my being. Take me and use me, my efforts, my thoughts, my resources, all that I am in thy service to the world of men and to thy noble cosmic purposes, yet unknown to my mind. Teach me to be kind in the way of the law that awakens men and guides them to the shores of reality, to the confluence of the river of life, to the Edenic source, that I may understand that the leaves of the tree of life given to me each day are for the healing of the nations, that as I garner them into the treasury of being and offer the fruit of my loving adoration to thee and to thy purposes supreme, I shall indeed hold covenant with thee as my guide, my guardian, my friend. For thou art the directing connector who shall establish my life stream with those heavenly contacts, limited only by the flow of the hours, who will assist me to perform in the world of men the most meaningful aspect of my individual life plan as conceived by thee and executed as by the karmic board of spiritual overseers who under thy holy direction do administer thy laws. So be it, O eternal Father, and may the covenant of thy beloved Son, the living Christ, the only begotten of the light, teach me to be aware that he liveth today within the triunity of my being as the great mediator between my individualized divine presence and my human self, that he raiseth me into Christ's consciousness and thy divine realization, in order that as the eternal Son becomes one with the Father, so I may ultimately become one with thee in that dynamic moment when out of union is born my perfect freedom to move, to think, to create, to design, to fulfill, to inhabit, to inherit, to dwell, and to be holy within the fullness of thy light. Father, into thy hands I commend my being. As I, Moria, have written this unto my Father, so I ask you to think of me as your Father and to commend your path and your chila ship into my keeping, that I might guide you on the homeward way and spare your feet, descending into the pitfalls. Yes, beloved, the covenant of the Magi is an ancient commitment of those wise men, even the sons of the solitude, who have descended down the centuries, bearing the Christ child in their hearts. For unto us the man-child is given, and we are the bearers of that child, and the sponsors when children are born out of that crystal fire mist that is the great heart pattern of the divine man-child, the living Christ. Yes, we walk the earth, and we are more than three in number. We are here and there in the etheric octave and in physical embodiment. We yet train our own, and I would train my own here at Maitreya's Mystery School. I am grateful to find you intact and not bruised or beaten by anything whatsoever as in the loss and the great damage to the Tibetan strongholds. Yes, beloved, there are yet hordes in the earth, and they are not isolated to the Far East and the Mongols. They are in this nation. They are those who remain stripped of their life force and of their integration in God. They are the ignorant ones who ignore they are there, beloved, and they are the ones who trample upon civilization 
who are out of the astral plane and shall return to it. See to it then, beloved, that they do not pull the rug out from under this civilization. Mark the spoilers and call to God to deal with them. Also see to it, beloved, that in the keeping of the flame of our retreat, you are not outsmarted in your own conceit, but rather choose to walk the way of true and pure humility that is the highest greatness on earth. I commend you to the keeping of the flame of the Chohans and to the expansion of opportunity here. I commend you to the fight to the finish. And what is the finish? It is when the matter cosmos is itself exorcised and merges with the spirit cosmos and the twain are one. Until then, beloved, let us take our rest, perhaps beside the Mulheron Creek or in the mountains. Let us take our rest in stages and return to the line that is drawn, for it is indeed drawn, and you have drawn it deep. Maintain your line and do not give up the pure land. For this pure land is hierarchy's dispensation and offering. Do not expect another and another, for it is not the time or the season. This then is it, beloved. I commend you to your victory and to the glory of God within. I am Moria. Let the troops march and let the bodhisattvas appear. Let us sing to our beloved El Moria the words we know so well to pomp and circumstance. Make your fiats, if you will. Yeah. 